Ja, Skauer. <lacht> You're watching the IEC 61131 Basics Series. This video tutorial shows how to implement hardware inputs and outputs in IEC 61131. Hi, I'm Matt Pelletier, and we're going to continue with that parking gate control example by simulating an input and an output to the PLC. We'll look at I.O. modules, addressing, implementing best practice, and going so far as to examine the execution sequence of the I.O. and the configuration of task assignment. So let's look at our project here and see what we have. We have this simple counter with uh, the gate open coil. And we're able to use this in debug mode. We can use this sensor here uh, built in. And uh, it counts up the number of cars as if there were cars coming in. But the way this works right now, it's not using any real inputs or outputs. Uh, we do have the ability to simulate real inputs and outputs through this input module, hardware input module in the simulator and this hardware output module in the simulator. We're able to click on these and turn them on. So the idea here is wouldn't it be more realistic to assume that there is a sensor wired to input zero to sense the cars and that there is a relay wired to output zero to lift and lower the gate. And that's exactly what is being illustrated here. We have a sensor of some kind, which in reality is just the, the same as a, a switch. A physical circuit is wired into an input module. And then the output module is wired to uh, some type of relay, which raises and lowers the gate. And so the question then is, how can the PLC interface with these devices? And more importantly, what do you as a programmer have to do and have to understand in order for these devices to work properly. And so that brings us to the I.O. module concept, which we're illustrating here. Let's look first at the input side. So you see how the digital input module represented in the simulator by this piece is really just a way for a simple circuit, a simple switch to turn on and off an optically isolated input inside this module. And this is the interface into the PLC. And the PLC, the processor, will see an input variable. And we'll see that that is indicated by the syntax percent %i, followed by a specific address. And we call that the hardware address. And then likewise, the processor is able to control these output variables, which are given by percent %q. And those output variables control the real world output module, which in turn causes a flow of electric current, in this case, to energize a relay that can be used to raise or lower the gate. And so without getting into any more of the specifics, uh, I will just tell you that this input zero is already configured in the system as address percent %i for input and x0.0. And all you have to do to turn a variable into an input variable, basically to make that tie between a physical input and a variable, is to give it an address in the address column. And so we can do that with our input called sensor, give it an address in the address column, and then we'll be able to turn that sensor on and off with the physical input. And we'll explain later why ix0.0, why, where does that number and this letter x come from? Well, that explanation will be coming up next. But let's implement this first. So back in our program, let's be sure to leave debug mode. And we're editing our main v variable list. So open the variable list. And just so you guys can see this a little better here, I'm going to zoom in. And we're locating the variable called sensor. And we're going to give it that address as percent %i x0.0. x means bit, by the way. So with this simple change, you can download changes. Remember that download changes does a save. It's doing a make. And it will download as long as the make is successful. There we go. There's the download. 
Okay, now we're running and uh, close the resource, go to debug mode just to test this out, activate your PLC simulator and then if you click on zero, input zero, you see that sensor goes to true or to false. And then even back here in main, you can see the effect of that. Sensor goes to true, car came in, car rolls off, ready for the next car, it's counting up. And since we'll be using this sensor now, you may even want to adjust this window. And while that does chew up some of the real estate here, it does give you easy access to see this simulator, which otherwise will continue to be lost behind the application itself. And so as promised, I said that I would tell you where that address comes from. And it comes from the uh, I.O. configuration. Just double click to open that and you'll see that there are inputs and outputs and a range. I.O. configuration is in the project tree at the bottom. And you can see this here. There's a tab for inputs. It's easier to find input. It says percent IB0. Uh, not, not an X, but you get the idea. Percent IB0 means a byte zero. And then the output also percent Q b0 they use q for outputs so as not to confuse with the letter o or the number zero so this io configuration is what determines where a particular input or output module is used in the memory location of that particular plc and with yaskawa products you don't typically need to change this but it can be useful to look at it in order to confirm io addresses so we can cancel out of this, and now that we've seen a little bit of I.O. addresses in action in our code, I'd like to formally present the IEC 61131 byte level addressing. The first two characters are the percent and a letter, and that's called the location prefix. You'll typically see percent %i for input, percent %q for output, as I mentioned, and you may also see percent %m meaning just a memory location, not particularly related to physical inputs or outputs. The next part of the address is the data size, where X means a bit, B means a byte, W means a word, 16 bits, D for double, 32 bits, and L for long, 64 bits. So while the numbering scheme coming up next here uh, is numbering the number of bytes, you can have a data size that uses several bytes. So the number here is the memory address in bytes specifically for the location that's been given. So just as we saw that we had percent %i0, we can also have percent %q uh, byte number 0, and those are not the same memory location. Those are uh, These locations are completely separate. The memory is separate and the addressing starts over at zero in each of these locations. And the maximum is just whatever the maximum is supported by that particular PLC. Now this last piece, which is the dot and any number up to from zero to seven, is only valid, you'll only see this if you've used data size bit. Because what you're saying here is which particular bit of this byte is being used. So for byte, percent IB0, but byte has eight bits, you have bit dot zero through dot seven. And that is what we are seeing in this PLC simulator. We're seeing that there are eight inputs and eight outputs. The eight inputs exist as a byte, it's byte zero. And the eight outputs also exist as a byte. With this explanation now, I would like to challenge you to complete this quick quiz. And the challenge is to tell me what is the address required if you want to have this sensor here on input four. We want input four of the module to run the sensor and you want output number six to be the output wired to the relay to make the gate open. So question number one is the sensor. Question number two is the output.
So if you need a minute to think about it, uh, why don't you uh, pause the video? And the answer is that you will use the address percent %ix0.4 for the input sensor to use input number 4. And you'll use percent %qx0.6 for the output. So let's see if we can make that work. Go ahead and make it work. Again, I recommend you pause the video, and after this, then I will show how it's done. So to use input 4 and output 6, we'll go to the main variables worksheet here. And the sensor variable, I can just change this here to I, percent %ix0.4. And the output was called gate open. And so back here to the main variable, gate open. will be percent %q x 0 0.6 if I wanted arbitrarily output 6. So let's download those changes. And now closing the resource, going to debug mode. You can see in the main POU that output 6 is on. The gate is open since the parking lot is not full. And we can use input number 4 to turn on the sensor. And turn it on and off and simulate cars passing over the sensor and being counted into the counter. And now for this next activity called using IO as a byte, I would like us to create an input variable that contains all of the eight inputs and another input variable that contains all of the eight outputs. And also for this activity we're specifying that you should create these variables in the global variables list. And we'll be able to play with that, look at that in debug mode, and learn a few other things. So if you think you know what to do, again, just pause the video and see if you can uh, work through these, and then I will uh, also show how they're done. Okay, first I will create the variable di underscore pc sim for the digital input byte, I'll leave debug mode, and I'm going to make these as a global variable, so go to the global variables list, in global variables. The secret here is to right click anywhere, and you can do append or insert variable. Append puts it at the bottom, and we're going to call it di underscore pc sim, First is the data type. We wanted it as a byte, so we'll type in by byte. We'll skip ahead to the address, and the address is percent %i for inputs. And now don't type in x like you may have done before. Use b for byte, we're doing the whole byte, and zero. It's byte zero. No dot at the end if it's a byte, only for bits with the X indicator. And then likewise for DO, we'll do append variable, and we'll create DO underscore PC sim, also as a byte. I'm just using tab here to tab to the different fields. And now percent Q for output, B for byte, zero. So let's download changes to put those into our system. And once again, close resource, go to debug. And you can see it puts this uh, online value column. See it's given here, it says DIPC sim is 16 pound 10, and this one 16 pound 40. What do you think the 16 pound means? Well, why don't we go to the help on IEC 61131, search for 16 pound, and if you'd read through these, you'd get to literals in IEC 61131. Base 16 literals are given with the prefix 16 pound, so it's hexadecimal numbering system. Okay. So it says we're seeing hexadecimal one zero. And you may even want to see these in binary. That's also possible. The area you need to go to in the variable lists is this uh, gray row header area. If you double click here, 
you can get this debug resource window up again. And over at the right, you have the Valley Display Standard, which just adjusts the display based on the data itself. But you can force all of the data to be binary. And then hit Close. And now we can see the bits of each of these. Bit 6 here and bit 4. Looks a lot like that. And then also, we had wanted to overwrite the outputs in debug mode. And that would be here, DO. You can double click on this row header again. You can put in a value. It can be in any format. Uh, if you want to put, let's say, uh, 5, you can overwrite it. And then 5 converts to binary. You can see here. And you could also type in this hexadecimal format, 16 pound, put in letters such as A, B, you know, or letters or numbers, the hexadecimal numbering system we're assuming you're familiar with, I guess, and overwrite that. So there's the hexadecimal numbering system. You could test all the outputs with 16 pound FF. There they all are. I'll turn them all off here with zero. And I will put it back to the standard value display. And so that's a little diversion of looking at all of your inputs and all of your outputs in one variable. You can see that we still have our main V where we look at a, a specific bit as a separate variable. And so this is not any type of conflict. You can have different variables using the same memory areas. But you do have to be careful with that. So if we take this concept then into the real world, a PLC will have many modules. And uh, just as a plug here for Yaskawa and the MPIEC controllers, in case you're wondering how this works, is the MPIEC has different types of modules and different types of inputs. Uh, some of them are Ethernet IP, adapter, Modbus slave, and those have a certain memory area assigned to them. Uh, Ethernet IP and Modbus devices have another range of memory. Uh, anything operating over Mechatrolink has yet another range of memory. And then any of the local inputs, meaning uh, slots right on the device itself, would have this uh, higher memory input range. And uh, likewise for the outputs, there's a matching uh, memory range. And to make managing all this memory a bit easier, uh, you can rest assured that Motionworks IEC controls the addresses and creates many of these variables automatically for MPIEC controllers. At this point, we're going to break to end part one of using I.O. So please continue with the next video, which covers the second half of this section.